Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. Today I'd like to show you how to replace for loops in R with LApply. For loops are very popular in other programming languages and it's also possible to write them in R, but in R there are often other approaches that are more powerful, more efficient and more elegant than for loops. In a previous video I showed you how to use vectorized functions, but vectorized functions can't replace all for loops, so here we have a little more complicated use case. Well, it's not that complicated, but a vectorized function is not enough to replace the for loops here, so we'll use LApply. The task we have is to create several plots for subsets of our data. We'll do that first using a for loop, and then we'll see how to replace that for loop using LApply and a more typical R coding style. The data we're using today comes from the ggplot2 package, so you can follow along without downloading it from anywhere. It's the MPG dataset, and it contains fuel economy data for 38 popular models of cars. This is a quick glimpse of the data, and on the next slide I show you the manufacturers that, you've, that we find in the data. I'm using the Google Docs theme from the ggthemes package for the plots, and we see there are 15 manufacturers in this dataset, and for the following task, I wanted to simplify that and reduce the number of manufacturers to five. So we have the top four, Dodge, Toyota, Volkswagen, and Ford, and we recorded all others as others. So you see that in the legend. I used the forecats package with a great factor lump min function to make this recording, and all manufacturers with fewer than 20 cars in this data set get assigned to the others category. And then I have a manual color scale here, scale fill manual to um, provide the four, first four colors of the ggplot default color scheme and then all the other manufacturers are displayed in gray. Right, so the task is to show fuel efficiency versus engine displacement, engine displacement being displayed on the x-axis and fuel efficiency in city miles per gallon on the y-axis. Um, so we want to show that for all the manufacturers. As a start, I created a scatter plot for all the data. So we see the five manufacturers here, but to be honest, I find it a bit hard to distinguish trends between different manufacturers in this plot. We could add trend lines for each manufacturer, but I think this would be maybe a bit of an overkill, too much information for one plot. Of course, in GDplot2, we could use facets to create different subplots. That's a powerful technique, and there's nothing wrong with that. But let's say for this use case, we just need separate plots that we can also save in separate files for each manufacturer. So the first solution that may come to mind is a for loop. So this is what the for loop uh, looks like. I iterate using the iterator i over the levels of this recorded manufacturer's variable that we created before that contains these five manufacturers, the four genuine manufacturers and the others category. And then I use this iterator i to filter the data here for this manufacturer in each iteration. And I also use this iterator to create the subtitle of the plot with that manufacturer. We see on the right hand side, we do get five different plots. The others category is cut off at the bottom, but don't worry, we'll see that on the next slide. It just goes to show that we get separate plots here. They are aligned in this presentation, but there are separate plots that we can also save separately. Note that when you use ggplot inside a for loop, you need an explicit print statement to actually show the plots. So here I assign the plot to an object called p, and then I explicitly print that object to actually see the plots. And I can use that object p also to save the plots using ggsave. I commented this line out, but the code works. so. If you uncomment this, you can save the plot in this way, create um, a unique file name using the loop iterator, and of course, maybe a prefix for the plots and a file ending. Right, so this is the for loop, and now we want to replace this for loop with a more typical R approach. I don't know if, you've, if you're aware of this famous quote by Jenny Bryan. I also have a video about my 10 favorite R programming quotes, and the following is one of them. Someone has to write a loop, but it doesn't have to be you. So we'll keep that in mind and we'll replace the for loop now. And we see it's very easy. We can use a one-liner to replace the for loop. But before we do that, 
we switch to a functional programming approach, which means that we define our own plotting function. So I do that here, and instead of iterating over um, the vector using this iterator i, I use a function parameter that I call menu, manufacturer. We use that to filter the data again, and we also use that to create the subtitle. So now we have a user-defined function that we ca can call passing a manufacturer to create the plots. So how do we use that function? We see that on the right-hand side, I call the function and I provide the manufacturer as a string, and then the plot is created. So here the plots are aligned side by side again, but there are two separate plots that we can also save separately. The saving code is now excluded from the function, but we could use the same code that I used inside the for loop that you saw on the previous slide. So now, using this functional approach, we can write one line of code, a very simple short line of code to create each plot for each manufacturer, but we want to boil that down to a one-liner to create all the plots. And we do that now using lapply. So first I create a vector that contains the manufacturers. I use the levels of this recoded manufacturer variable um, that we created before that contains the five manufacturers. And then the lapply call is as simple as it can get. We iterate over this vector of manufacturers and we call for each manufacturer the plotting function myplot. So a very simple code. It's more efficient than the for loop. In this case, the task is simply enough that the for loop um, is not critical in terms of runtimes, but this lapply approach is much more efficient. Note that using this lapply approach, I do not need an explicit print statement here. It really stays as simple as it is. I could have made it into a complete one-liner, of course, um, using the levels function here inside of lapply, but I found this approach with a separate vector more readable. Right, that was basically it. Um, I think using lapply is a very powerful technique. I have a few closing remarks. So it's really useful to get familiar with this lapply approach because it extends well to other use cases. For example, if you really have to deal with large data or you have um, complex computations that take a lot of runtime, uh, you can run R code in parallel. And I have made videos about that. For example, the parallel package, which is part of base R, has functions cluster apply and cluster apply LB for load balancing to run R code in parallel. And it's a very nice extension of the lapply approach. It builds up on lapply and it's once you've mastered lapply, it's very easy to switch to cluster apply to run your code in parallel. Also, when you have large data sets that don't fit in R's memory, you can process the data in chunks. And there's the IO tools package that has a function chunk apply that is also very closely related to this lapply approach. If you have a lot of code that contains loops and you find it tiring or cumbersome to rewrite all this code to avoid the loops, you can also switch to the for each package and stick with loops, but run them in parallel using the do par adapter. I have a video on that as well, so you can check that out. And also what I didn't show you on the previous slide was that lapply returns a list. So for the sake of this presentation, which is um, made using the sharing in package, which builds up on R markdown, I used a trick to suppress this list output. You can find the code on my GitHub profile. It's linked to in the description. Um, so if you don't use that trick, you will get this typical list output in the console or in your markdown document with these double square brackets and then the numbers for each plot, one, two, three, but the list is empty. We can say the plots are a side effect of the plotting function. The return value of lapply is a list, um, but we are not interested in that list in this use case. So the more elegant or cleaner way of suppressing this list output is to use the walk function from the per package. Um, you just replace the lapply call with a call to the walk function. But note that for walk, the same holds true that we saw in the for loop. You need an explicit print statement then to actually show the plot. And last remark, um, I used a separate function definition here. I called it my plot to use that in combination with lapply to show you how simple and short and concise the lapply call is. Of course, you can avoid this assignment. You can use a so-called anonymous function, which is an unnamed function or a function that is not assigned to an R object and that is defined directly inside the lapply call. So that would be another 
option that you can use. It's a question of readability maybe, but if there's a function that you just need, need once and you don't want to have it as an object in your Chrome environment, you can use that approach. I have a video on how to create progress bars and run R code in parallel, where I use this approach and add apply call with an anonymous function that extends over several lines of code, so you can check that out if you like. That was it. I hope you found that useful. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other videos. All the best for your own R projects and your approaches with Alipply and friends. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.